Hey everybody, AZ Batfish here. Welcome back to my single player world in the Direwolf 20 mod pack for 1.12. So, in the last episode, we built this thing, which is pretty much just a, uh, a mob spawner. Um, it's a mob duplicator from Industrial Foregoing. We've got it hooked up. I was hoping to set this up to be a, <laughs> to be a farm that would produce um, rotten flesh so we could use these death generators and and use this contraption as basically passive power generation but that did not work uh we do not have enough mob essence unfortunately we don't have the production of that uh to keep this spawner going so that is not really working for us so i've decided to uh, come up with a different way and i you know this will be like the third episode in a row dedicated to getting some sort of power generation going I actually wanted to do that off camera because I didn't want to subject you guys to that again. Um, but I haven't been able to really get anything that works. So uh, this is an ender generator from Extra Utilities 2. It produces about 40 RF per tick for and um, each ender pearl will have it active for about a minute and 20 seconds. So one ender pearl will generate about 96,000 RF over those minute and 20 seconds. Um, yeah, and that's that's cool, I suppose, but um, not really great. That uh, uses doesn't produce enough energy per Ender Pearl to justify that yet. Um, that's part of my issue right now. Is I keep trying to do things, and I'm not sure what is best for my tech level. So I've decided to go back, and we are going to do super early game immersive engineering stuff. Thermoelectric generators. This was um, this was suggested to me um, by by some people, a couple people actually in the comments section. So uh, thanks to you guys, we are going to be doing this. I've looked into it a bit. It looks like I can get into doing this uh, with immersive engineering without going too far into that mod. I do want to have an immersive engineering setup. Like a base that runs on immersive engineering eventually, but right now I really just need something to get going. So thermoelectric in, uh, generators, as I understand it, is basically passive power generation um, that works uh, when you have this block in the world and on one side it's got lava and on the other side it's got water, it will start generating power. So I want to make a couple of these things. I want to start with four. So we need some constant tan, we need some steel, we need copper coil blocks. This is, uh, so the constant tan stuff, this is actually going to be pretty easy. You know, when I first clicked on it, I did that, what you just saw. I clicked on the immersive engineering one and I was like, man, I need an alloy can to make this stuff. That kind of stinks. Like, I don't want to have to go build, start building multi-block structures already. I wonder, does this work in induction smelter? It does. <laughs> It does uh, if you if you kind of hold off and wait for the the less red one the more yellow one Yeah, there it is. All right, so we need a bunch of constant tan uh, And we're gonna need to turn this constant tan into plates and we do that if I click on thing We need this engineers hammer which string uh, iron ingots and sticks do I did I make one of those? I feel like I made one of those uh, Can I double click this? I cannot uh, I wish I could do that because my stuff is pretty full. Is it actually, it would be smart if, uh, no, it's not in here either. Uh, I swear I made one. I swear I did, because I had to. I made a plate cast, so I had to create a plate, and then I made the plate cast. Yeah, okay, forge hammer. It's the Industrial Craft 2 one. So I actually need to make this uh, immersive engineering one. So let's grab a string. Uh... Do I have any sticks that I can see? I really, really need to get my storage situation sorted out. Uh, okay, uh, I have I have iron on my person. Okay, let's make this thing real quick. Ah, there we go, engineer's hammer. So, now what I need to do, hammer! <laughs> nice. Uh, so I need more constant. This is uh, this is from the test that I did, and I think if I remember correctly, the recipe they each need five, and it, so that means I need twenty. And if I've got two, I need eighteen more, which means I need nine of each of these guys. So I need nine. Was it copper and nickel, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make sure I actually put it in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nice. And into the induction smelter you go. All right, got our 20 constant tan ingots, and then if I run over here, I'm pretty sure I can just stick them on the table with the hammer and grab plates. Oh, that, 
Oh, I thought I broke it for a second. All right. Well, it looks like it does have durability, so that's okay. What else do we need? Uh, we need some steel ingots. Now, so if each one of these requires three, I need four. That means I need 12. So 12 times four coal powder is 48 coal powder. Do I have... Ah, ha, ha, nice. So I will grab those. And uh, do, 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 how many do I need? I already, I already forgot. Three times four is 12. <laughs> so I need two more ingots here. Uh, go one, two. Now I know this way that you can like middle click things from here and just get one, but I can't figure it out. Like when I middle click it changes my inventory if I shift or control N nothing I, I can't seem to do that I would really like to know how <laughs> because it's it uh, it definitely seems handy so all right so we stick our iron and our coal in there and we should be getting some steel ingots pretty soon okay got our steel ingots here um I can take these now what else so it's those copper cores right copper coil blocks so this is a bunch of LB wire coils so I need um, four of these, so that means I need 32 of those and 32 iron ingots, or, oh no, <laughs> 32 of those, four iron ingots. Uh, so what is this? This is just four copper wires, will give me four of them, so I need to do this eight times, so 32 copper wires, 32 sticks, and that is, uh, wow, one for one for real? I can get one copper wire, from one copper plate and a pair of shears. Are you kidding me? That's pretty intense. I figure like a copper plate should give you like, I don't know, eight wires? Really, it's one for one? That's pretty nuts. All right, Um, so I need 32 of them. I already grabbed a bit of copper. So um, what are those like engineers uh, cutter things? What are they called? These. So it's two sticks and one iron. Um, that'll probably last longer than a standard pair of shears. So we'll just pick these up here. I will make one of those thingies like that. And then like this. And now I need, I need plates, right? So I need 32 plates <laughs> like that. Okay. And then I need to turn those plates into, man, that is insane. It really is one for one. <laughs> That's hardcore, y'all. Okay, let's uh, do something like that. And then something like... Um, I'm, I'm doing something wrong, right? What am I doing wrong? Okay, finally, man. <laughs> Click through like 30 different things. All right, so I think we've actually pretty much got this done now, right? I can make... Again, with the clicking, why are you not doing what I want you to do? When I click here, and I say move items, but I hold down shift, you should move them all. There you go. All right. Poor thermoelectric generators. Let's uh, sleep so we don't die immediately when we go outside. All right. So we're going to plop these down outside somewhere. Let me just make sure there's nothing super scary right here. You bad guys, or are those all below? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see you. I see you, Mr. Creeper. Come here. Take a shuriken to the face. All right. Um, spider, don't care. Don't care. I think we're okay. We should be safe. All right. So, the thing with these thermoelectric generators... Uh-huh. See? You're trying to be creepy. I see it. I see it. Don't you... <laughs> Any other creepers over here? All right. Okay. I th now I think we're safe. So the thing with these, man, you better not mess up my crops, dude. Okay. Now I am fairly certain that we are mob free. <laughs> So, um, right, the thing with thermoelectric generators is that you've got to be set up kind of in a certain way so that um, they have lava and opposite water on multiple sides, right? So, 
Um, let's think about this. If I do something, it's like this, right? And then if I have lava, 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 and then, uh, hmm, let me think about this. All right, so it's a little easier to see with it set in the ground like this. So these four thermoelectric generators, basically they work by, um, you know, they produce power when they got lava on one side and water on the opposite side. So I've kind of set up this pattern, which um, I saw in uh, one of Rage's videos. I will go ahead and uh, link that here. It's a bit of an older one, but it should still hold up. Uh, it's at least what I watched to learn about thermoelectric generators. So uh, uh, yeah, we're basically going to, if you imagine that there's lava in the middle here. So if there's lava here, I would need water here. All right, and if there is lava here, I could have water here, and now, again, water here. So that way, if lava is in the middle here, I've got water opposite here, water opposite here, and then there would be lava here. I've got water opposite here. So basically, we're just going to do this thing with the water, so that it's filled up on the outside, and then when the middle has lava in it, each one of these is going to have lava opposite water in two different ways so that is a pretty cool setup so let me run it down below <laughs> uh and grab some lava and actually i will go ahead and make up a couple other buckets just so i don't have to make more than one trip all right so now if i see this guy right he's generating zero rf so is this guy none of these have any power but once i put lava here i should see maybe no? Hmm. Well, this is very strange. Do you still say zero? Um, but I'm I'm pretty sure I did this right. I mean, I've even looked it up on the wiki. It still says this is how to do it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is, let's just assume that maybe it is working, right? I'm pretty sure this is not going to... Okay, I was wrong. It does. It connects directly. That's awesome. And it does look like now that I'm connected, we're starting to see some power in here. So that is pretty sweet. Um, let's um, let's find. You know what? Let's make a brand new energy uh, or power ener energy cell. Power cell is the RF tools thing. Energy cell for this, which is one of uh, these guys. All right. So let's move these up by one more. <laughs> And then I will slap this guy right here. Sweet, so he's receiving power from all sides and I will go ahead and give him a hardened upgrade. Nice. So let's shift click this guy and we'll make sure, um, I don't I don't know. Let's, we're gonna make it blue everywhere except for the top. I want the top to be orange. Everything else can be blue, good. So, this is our passive power generation. Um, doing all right, yeah? So I don't know exactly how much RF we're putting out because of course it doesn't tell me. Oh, 31. So 31. Ooh. Oh, that was water. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so 31 RF per tick times four. What, uh, so we're, we're getting pretty close to 128 RF per tick. Uh, it's 124, I suppose. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad for uh, completely passive power generation. Um, I could obviously add more of these things, right? I'm curious though, can I stack these up? Like add more of these on top? I, I know I would have to add more like lava buckets and stuff, but can I build up and have them like connect to each other? Like if I had like a stack of these, say I had the same thing built again on top of it. And then again, so I had three of them, right? Uh, if I connect only to the tops like this, do I still get the power from all three? Um, I don't know. The only way to, uh, whoa, hello lag. I guess the only way to test that is to build some more, huh? All right, so that's just for testing purposes. Went ahead and built up with some cobblestone. I wanted to mention, I went ahead and upgraded my dank null to the Mark III, and, uh, this thing is, is pretty awesome. Um... 
So, you know, the original one, the red version, it only it took two stacks, right? So it would have 128 uh, items in e of each kind. So like, you know, 128 cobblestone, whatever. Uh, the blue one, of course, you upgrade that. Um, this one held 512. So I assume the third one would be 1028, right? Well, I, I don't actually know. I'm at 1065 and it hasn't stopped yet. So I, I don't know how many you can hold, but I think that's great. That means um, that is it, not only is it like, you know, a dev null basically so that I don't have to worry about filling my inventory up when I'm mining, but it's also like literal portable storage for this stuff. Like I could keep upgrading. There's, there's three more uh, things that I could upgrade uh, with. I, I bet you that's probably gold, diamond, and emeralds, right? Uh, which uh, I'm going to need. I, I, I'm basically as far as I can get for right now. But uh, yeah, it's great. I can hold so much of it that um, I, I don't even really need to worry about that stuff. So like I've got just the cobblestone, diorite, and granite right now, but I could add a, I can add so many different types of things in here. It's so great. Um, anyways, getting a little distracted here. Uh, I want to go ahead and put my lava buckets in place. Now I'm I'm fairly certain that all eight now of these generators are going to be able to generate power this way. What I'm not sure it, of is when I connect my cables to the top here, am I going to be getting double the output that I was before? As in one connection w is good for both generators in this column, right? So um, go ahead and grab our connectors back out and we'll put that on here. And it's gonna be, it's hard to tell basically until we get the, uh, the cell in place because right now they're telling us how much energy each one has. And while that's, that's not very much, I mean, it's decent information, but it's not the information I want. What I wanna see is I was afraid of that. Okay. So this is basically the same amount of power, even though I've doubled the generators. Um, that kind of stinks that I can't go up like that. Huh. I don't... That's very strange. I would have kind of ex hoped that it would have worked. Okay. Well, that's not going to work, so that means we're going to have to take up more space. It's going to be a wider footprint, um, which is unfortunate, but, uh, you know, not the end of the world. Uh, I will go ahead and pick up these lava buckets here, and then I guess save them for something? <laughs> um, no, I'm going to need them. I I'm going to need them over here. Okay, not a problem. All right, so I've rearranged some things now, and now I've got all eight of our thermoelectric generators going. So basically how these work really is it's not about water and lava as, as much as it is temperature difference, right? So you've got a hot source and then a cold source. And really, uh, water is pretty good. The only thing better than water uh, is ice, of course. Um, there is also um, gelid cryothium, I think is a little bit better even than that, but um, I don't really, I mean, we're talking about like the difference, the difference here is like one or two RF per tick. For instance, if I were to right now, because I'm using lava and water, according to the wiki, these are each producing, each one of those opposites are producing 15 RF per tick. And since I've got two opposites, uh, for each one, each generator is producing 30 RF per tick. But if I were to swap out the water for like packed ice or regular ice would work, but it would probably melt. So like packed ice, uh, we could get 16 RF per tick instead of 15. So each would be generating 32 instead of just 30. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, however, <laughs> for the hot source, there's all kinds of stuff we can use, um, from various mods with reactors and stuff. But if I use blazing pyrothium, I can double the output, um, of energy here instead of lava. So blazing pyrothium, uh, is a liquid that you get and you can get it in a magma crucible by smelting down pyrothium dust, which is coal dust, sulfur, redstone, and blaze powder, and each one of those gives me two, 
and it looks like if I smelt down one of these things, I will get 250 millibuckets, so I would need four dust to get one bucket. And if I need, uh, it looks like I need six buckets, that means I need 24 dust, but I, I probably have all of that stuff, so I could do that if I wanted to, because right now, you know, I said each one of these is generating 30, there's eight, so I'm getting about 240 passive RF per tick, uh, which is pretty sweet, but I could double that to nearly 500 by swapping out for uh, that blazing pyrothium. So let's see if we can do that. Let's uh, run in here and let's kind of check this out. So what did we need? Uh, this pyrothium dust. So I need, how many of these? I need four per bucket. I need six buckets. So I need 24. That means I need to make this 12 times. Uh, yeah, so I need 12 blaze powder. It's the sulfur that's going to be the problem. How much sulfur do I have? Um, I know I have some on me. All right, guys, so I was all set up to uh, cook up a bunch of netherrack and soul sand in the induction smelter because it turns out um, that that is one of the best ways to get sulfur. It's a 25% chance uh, when you cook up two netherrack and one soul sand. Oh, I was willing to risk it, but uh, as it turns out, I had a bunch uh, in in the uh, in the mob farm uh, from where I had the blaze running. So when I ran out to grab the blaze rods that I needed, I was like, "Oh yeah, there's a bunch of sulfur in here. Sweet!" So I can quickly craft up these four pyrothium dusts. Uh, so well, actually, it gives me twenty four in there, and then I sh can come into the pulverizer, not the pulverizer, the magma crucible dump these guys in here, and they are going to cook down into blazing pyrothium. Oh no, I got some redstone in here. Oh, that kind of stinks. Oh, can I just do this? Will this pull it out without having a full bucket? I don't think it will. Um, all right. And that's so much energy too. That sucks. Well, I, I, gotta, I, gotta, do, I gotta break it. Okay, so we'll break this. And we'll put it back in. Does that keep its stuff? Yeah. All right. Well, cool. It kept most of its power, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, blazing pyrothium. Sweet. So now I can put my buckets in here. And we'll pull these out. And then as this cooks down, it will, of course, uh, get more of that. Go ahead and pull you out. All right. So our sixth blazing pyrothium bucket. Let's go see what this does for us out here. Um swing out here and what I want to do is take this and then you like that all right so if I right now this is at well I mean of course this these numbers really don't tell me anything and it's kind of frustrating I wish there was a I wish there was a better way to see these numbers but okay so if I swap you out I pick you three up here like this and uh, then I put down blazing pyrothium instead oh geez <laughs> uh, <laughs> was not expecting that um, all right clearly I should probably um, huh <laughs> uh, do a bit of research did that just happen because it was grass no it straight up sets these blocks on fire that's a stone block too um, hmm that's definitely hot stuff man Definitely hot stuff. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's put the lava back in for now. <laughs> that was nuts, man. What kind of stuff can I use? I, I wonder, would it, would it set obsidian on fire? Um, I think like fireproof blocks. See, now this says 360 RF. Like, what does it even mean? Okay, now this is full, so these are all going to fill up. It basically, I, I mean, I know what it is. It's showing me how much power is actually in the uh, the cable, right? And since there's so many in this configuration, it can hold 25,000. And if this was filling up, it would show me, you know, man. I don't know, man. I, I wish there was a way I could see how much RF per tick this was putting out. Um, but, all right, so... Hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> this is not uh, this is not really working out. So I've used this water stone here, and it won't actually light that on fire, which is good. The problem is 
that it turns the nearby water sources into stone. Uh, so the water is not actually cool enough to keep this stuff cool, which means that it's, you know, so it's, it's turning all the stuff, uh, the water, the water into stone and then lighting the stone on fire. So, uh, I, for now, am going to go back to using the lava until I have access to something that'll work better for the cooling agent, which I am assuming is probably something like that gelid cryothium stuff that I have heard a thing or two about. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can look at it real quick. I mean, how, how hard is that stuff to get? Gelid cryothium. Uh, magma crucible with this cryothium dust blizz powder and niter snowballs yeah i don't actually have um that stuff yet it's not gonna be super hard to get but we'll have to capture the mobs and whatnot so yeah let me let me get this stuff sorted back out okay that's all cleared up now um yeah that was pretty funny <laughs> i'm still kind of laughing about that you know it is cool to know though that the water stone is actually fireproof it's not just a, a pretty looking block it actually does have a function that's neat um i think that's pretty cool um so yeah hopefully i can uh, get some of that gelid cryothium pretty soon i don't actually think it'll be that difficult um i just need to fly around one night with a uh a mob capture thing i can i can't remember what the new things are called uh, I could never remember. They used to be called safari nets, whatever they're called now. Um, and until I find a blizz or whatever it is that I need. Um, but yeah, I think that's good for now. That's good for now. We've definitely got some power gen going. I did go ahead and upgrade this to the reinforced version. Not that that's really necessary, but until I get my energy cells or my power cells going so I can actually move this power, um, this will at least help me build up a decent amount. So we're over 11 million already. That's pretty sweet. Speaking of energy cells, uh, I need some stuff to make an energy cell. And uh, you see there, I was looking at actually additions, and there's a reason for that. So if I go look at the, um, wh why, why you know showing me the energy cell? Uh, oh, it's because I don't, it's not energy cell. It's the power cell. I keep getting those two confused. So the power cell requires a prismarine shard. I'm not set up for a prismarine. I don't want to go. I mean, I guess I could, but I don't want to. Oh, but look, with actually additions, I can transform nether quartz into prismarine. So since I've been thinking about actually additions anyways, and I finally got this power going, I don't quite know how to use it with actually additions just yet. I think I've got an idea, but real quick, I think I want to round out this episode. Um, by setting up a super, super, super basic actually additions setup. So what I'm going to be building real quick, I will show you guys. If I go back to at actually additions, I need what's called an atomic reconstructor, which is uh, some iron ingots, some redstone and iron casing, which itself is iron ingots, sticks and a piece of black quartz, which is pretty simple. I got tons of that stuff and um, the atomic reconstructor does require CF, which I think is crystal flux, which is the actually additions power. Uh, I don't know how to convert RF right now, but actually additions does have its own generators. There's a bunch of them, um, but of course, of course, you know me and coal generators. That's easy stuff, right? So that's just an iron casing, which we already saw some cobblestone and some coal. So I'm going to build that stuff real quick, guys, and uh, set it up and I'll show you how it works. Oh, by the way, your black quartz, uh, to get it out of ore form, you just gotta cook it down. Stick it in a furnace. Good to go. Okay, so this is my super simple setup. Atomic reconstructor with the laser pointing out this way. I think that's enough space. Uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and quickly <laughs> uh, give it one more. We'll go ahead and grab one of these like that. We'll make sure I have this ready. No, no, <laughs> and there, okay, perfect, beautiful, first try. All right, so we got our coal generator here and our atomic reconstructor here. I haven't messed with this, so I don't actually even know if this particular setup will work, but uh, if I drop some coal in here, it starts generating power, and I'm assuming that it's giving power to the laser. Uh, why, why you go off on your own? You're not supposed to do that, hey. Why you, what? I thought I was only supposed to do that when I hit it with a button. Why is it doing that? <laughs> uh, okay, redstone mode. 
Hold a redstone torch to toggle. Okay, click. What if I... Oh, hold a redstone torch to toggle. Okay, so where is my... Do I have any redstone torches? Oh, I saw it. So... Right click to toggle. Pulse. Okay. So now it should only go when I hit the button? Nice. Sweet. Okay. So cool. That laser is what basically transmutes all your stuff. <laughs> so uh, for instance, our... I'll go ahead and drop this on the ground. Bam. Hit the button. Shoot it with the laser. And that did nothing. Why you do nothing? Yeah, I don't understand why this isn't working. Nether Quartz, Atomic Reconstructor. Um, yeah, I clicked in red there. It just takes you to the book. There's nothing new I haven't seen. Um, 30,000 CF. So I've got 78, 79, almost 80,000 now. I can see that in the bottom left there. So, I mean, did I maybe just not have enough before? So now I've got 85, hit the button. Oh, okay. So it just uses all its power when you hit the button, I guess? I don't know. I, I guess I just didn't have enough power last time. Sweet. So I got that, which means that now if I look at the rest of this recipe... Oh, but you know what? I need two of these things. <laughs> all right. I literally had to use all the rest of my lapis to make these two machine frames. I am now completely devoid of lapis. Okay, so now I need to also make two of these things. All right, there we go. So now what I'm pretty sure I can do is run over here. And if I put this power cell on top of this guy, he is now, I think he's set to, everybody's set to in. All right, so now he's receiving power from our uh, energy cell. The power cell is receiving energy from the energy cell. And if I take this card and right click on him, so now he's installed the module, he's link ID one. If I link this here, he's now link ID one. And if I put this power cell basically anywhere, I set him to out and then use this link card, he's now got the same amount, I think, uh, or is it, no, I gotta do this, like that, bam. Wait, why is he, why are you doing this? <laughs> I think maybe I did it right the first time. So if I, uh, right click you, put you back in here. So now your link ID one. Oh man, I, okay, there it goes. <laughs> I don't, why did it, why did it do it that time? I don't know. But now these two are basically shared. They have the same power. So I can take this guy anywhere. This is basically a dimensional transceiver from RF Tools. <laughs> uh, well, um, not not dimensional transceiver. You know, it's it doesn't do power or anything, uh, but or, or items and fluids and stuff. It only does power. But sweet. So now I'm set up and I have power and I can take it wherever I need to, like inside the house, maybe for some storage. But unfortunately. That's all the time I've got for this episode, you guys. I hope you liked it. I know I am super happy to finally, finally have um, power sorted out, at least for the beginning. Uh, at least enough so I can now finally get some storage going. If you did like it, leave me a like down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you got any suggestions, um, hit that subscribe button if you're new. If you're enjoying the content, don't want to miss anything. I do have some other series on the channel you might enjoy. But yeah, until next time, you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.